before, but we have been talking a lot about Calvin Johnson uh, this year, and he was recently on the Up and Smoke podcast, one of the more popular uh, podcasts that's going on today. And he made some more headlines, Joy, because he said that he – because, look, the thing is everyone's talking about the $1.6 million and the fractured relationship and, well, why did Calvin take the contract from an organization that he hated? He came out and he talked about it. And he essentially said, I stayed in Detroit because I thought we could win a ring there. And that 2014 team, Jake, we've had this discussion before, historically, NFL historically great defense. You, you've, you know, you, you've praised them many, many times. Yeah. You guys on offense certainly had a Hall of Fame receiver, very good quarterback, awesome rushing attack, good in the backfield as well. You guys believed that, right? We you did. guys, you believed you could, because that team took on that look. As you guys were coming down the stretch of that season, sixty-eight yards <laughs> rushing against per game. Was it? Hold on, was it? Or was it sixty-seven? Yeah, what? Yeah, right, upper sixties. I yeah. know it was historically great. Historically, I mean, I, I would have hate to play against our defense. I, I, I'm not lying. They were flying around. I mean, if this guy wasn't making a play. How many gorillas? How many gorillas on that defense? That entire defense defense is gorillas. (laughs) Like, like. I mean, the entire. I mean, let's go. Let's go. Yeah. uh, From let's go. King from from Carr. We had you had you had you had uh, (laughs) Jason Jones. Yeah. At at the uh, at defensive end, you had Zeke Ansah at defensive end. You had you had Nick Fairley. (laughs) You had Sue. Let's go to the linebacker. You had Stephen Tullick. You had Tier Whitehead. Oh, had one of my favorite guys and the guy DeAndre Andre Levy. DeAndre Levy. Oh, and let's go to DBs. You had Glover Quinn. Wow. You had Rice Mathis. Wow. Come on. You had you had a Darius Slay. And you had Diggs. Right. Man, I just got real depressed. Yeah. And everybody was dogs. Dogs. Gorillas on that. Really. I mean, just. I mean, play after play after play, game after game. I I can't find the weak point. I couldn't, like, as far as, like, running the game, like, running the ball against us, that was a no-go. That was easy. You had to pass the ball on us. You had to. There was no way you were going to run the ball on us consistently. Um, even with the Cowboys, when we went down there, they weren't running the ball successfully on us. They weren't, you know. But, you know, it was crazy, man. Shout out to that 2014 Shout defense. Out. We knew we had a 24-hour window. And I'm not saying, you know, the coast switch. Um Coach Caldwell had 12, he had 12 months to get us together and say, listen, we need to win now. We can't wait till next year. We have to win. He knew it. Coach Caldwell knew it. Yeah. He had the same roster. Basically, we had 2013. We went 7-9. He came in and said, listen, guys, we have to win now. And so, we ended up going 11-5 and losing the playoffs. But, honestly, man, we put up a we, – we, if we could have had to say – I'm not going to say – What did you need? Well, we would have had, this they would have had Coach Caldwell for those two years with that same roster. Yeah, I think we would have had a. You'd have been further along. We would have been further along. So a four along. year. He came and did. He came and did that in his first year. I yeah. And then lost that roster. We basically almost lost our we, like our defense line was almost depleted. You know, we didn't have C.J. Mosey coming off the bench again. Right, he wasn't there. Um, you know, we lost Nick. You know, we lost Sue. Mm-hmm. Um, we lost um. A couple of backups at defensive end, like we we you know, we lost a couple of guys. And, and you know what? I want to. I do want to talk about that because, and, and Calvin's quote was the main reason I decided to stay in Detroit was because I thought we had a chance to win that ring, and that was Calvin Johnson on the all all the smoke podcast. And I do want to talk about that because, as I've said before, D Mac and I were were together to pass radio life at, at one hundred five one working at the time, and I was taking those calls, I was doing those shows, and the fans too. And, and look, I'll, I'll say it into the camera. There were 70% of you out there that didn't want them to re-sign Sue. I took those calls because my position was the entire time, you give this man the bag because everything <laughs> it, revolves it, around it, him it, defensively. Because it, it, he's a bad man. And, 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 we were like, and that's what it was. Well, we this need a happened. bad man. This is, why, this is why we didn't do it. They, want, they offered him something. But the thing, I think they offered him. Uh, Not quite what the Dolphins offered him. The numbers yeah, but he didn't were, want no, to no, be here. There's no, the same thing with you. No, it wasn't make that. It wasn't that either. It wasn't that. What what it was? Right. What it was is it was a number thing. And so they offered him. I think a little bit less than what Miami offered, but it was a little less. A little less. It's a little less. But the out. But the bigger, the biggest, uh, I think thing for him was the taxes. He was, the taxes. He was going to save money on the state taxes. No state income him, tax in right, Florida. So he was going to get another, I think, four or five million on top of whatever he. Was, was already receiving, 
and then um, you know he's going to Miami. Come hey, on out. Yeah, yeah and out. and look, I never said, and you guys that's, never that's, said, Sue's a businessman. Now he, but that's that's his side. Now the business side for us was we didn't offer, we didn't we didn't match the guarantee money as Miami. We didn't match yeah. that guarantee. I think we guaranteed them like fifty seven or around there. And I think they guaranteed them a little bit. Like I can't remember what they guaranteed, but it was more than what we guaranteed. And so, but basically, if we would have had, if we would have paid Sue, that would have crippled us. We could have had three guys taking up majority of, uh, majority of our salary cap. You would have had Stafford, you would have had Calvin Johnson, and now you would have had Sue. How do you build a team? And that's where that rookie pay structure really, yeah. really hurt the Lions because you had a number one overall pick. I think Calvin was a number two overall pick. And Sue, I believe, was number number three overall, I want to say, yeah. so, somewhere along there. Yeah. But they have massive rookie contracts, too. Massive. Massive. And I think the, that was the last – I think Sue last year was the last year they had that uh, no cap um, getting drafted out of college. I think the following year, I think they brought in Nick Fairley, mm-hmm. and I think he had the cap on his. And, and I remember Sue saying, ah. Oh, I can't imagine doing what we do. <laughs> you get paid what you get paid. You get paid what you get paid. Woo. Well, I came out right on time, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, a- a- absolutely he did. And, you know, and Sue. Hey, and I love it because that seems, there's those guys that will remind you, too, right. that they got out on time. Like Sam Ooh. Bradford, I'm sure. Like Right on time. Uh, and, look, and look, Sue was a two-time All-Pro. All pro, not just pro bowler, two time all pro. And Joy, you know that when you're all pro, that, yeah. that hits different. It's different. Yeah. yeah but yeah. I mean, he would go on to make a pro bowl during his time at Miami, but he also made a lot of money. Pro bowl is a. I, yeah. Not it's a, as a popularity. No, all it is. is. No doubt. Popular. No doubt. But all pro is where it's at. But I, I again, Joy, I keep coming back to that because I want the people to understand how close you guys were. You guys were closer than, than you get credit for. I, wanna, I will say that. I, I want to talk, talk about pro bowl. I want to talk about that real quick. You know how they select it? You know how we you know you know how they do that? Well, they used to have the fans vote. All right. So what they do is they bring you so after practice they'll bring you a big packet. All right? They call you into your meeting room, you go into your position uh, meeting room, and then you sit down, they give you these packets and they ask you to fill it out. Basically it has everybody that you want to be a pro bowl, you think should be a pro bowl for each position, all right? And so you go through, you mark, I think you mark like four people for each one, uh, like first team, second team, or, you, you know, two people for each one, one first team, one second team. And you go through every position um, and basically every team, like right, who do you feel should be this guy? And sometimes guys don't know every guy in the NFL. Right. And so they just vote for the most popular guy. You know, they don't even. They, they do it essentially the same way the fans do it. Yeah, and, so, and, then, and then what they do is, and then what they do is they don't understand how, Signing these things and, and voting for this guy, and his yards isn't the same as his. Or he doesn't have as many picks as a guy you don't know because you don't do research. You just want to sign in and go home. Listen, but half affect- the guys half the time will pick the guys that don't but, deserve their out of but the I'm gonna joke. But I'm going to tell you how this affects those guys who bust their bust to have those good years. This is, this is what happens. They don't get the recognition, right? And so when it comes time for the negotiation of the contract, now, they might have did just as well, but, like, you know, that Pro Bowl is something else that you can put on top of what you already done, on top of your body work to get you paid more than what, um, than what, than probably what you did get. Um, and so it's important that we go in there, we sign, we take our time with it, but they don't. Guys really go in there and just mark whatever, and they try to get home. But the guys who understand it, the guys who understand it, they take their time, they fill it out because this is affecting guys' livelihoods, it's affecting what they're going to get paid, and like it's affecting their future. And so, uh, I, I I was never a big fan of um, the Pro Bowl as far as how the voting was done. Right, and, and I and I understand that, you know, and and that is the way that it breaks down. But we're gonna take a break when we come back. Got to get into the college football. 